Hi, and welcome to Cooking to a Beef Fed. I'm your host, Joshua Glenn. Today, we're taking a look at Edna Lewis's life and one of her recipes, blueberry cake. Let's get cooking. This recipe is fairly simple as far as ingredients goes. Most of the things you're going to have in your pantry and cupboard. Um, I only had to buy a few things, such as the blueberries and vanilla, as I was out of vanilla, so everything else I had. We're gonna start with our blueberries. This is one and a half cups of fresh blueberries that I'm adding a third, fourth cup of water. We're gonna let this simmer about three to four minutes. While your blueberries are simmering, we're gonna take our flour that we've sifted and add in our salt and give that a good mix. We're then going to add in room temperature butter that is softened. We do not want it to be too soft, but you do want it to be room temperature. You could use a pastry cutter here, but I like to use God's utensils and just use my hands to get everything incorporated. Once you have your butter incorporated, we're gonna start adding our other ingredients. One egg. I always like to crack an egg into another vessel just to make sure that there's no shells or that the egg isn't bad. And also, we're gonna add in our milk. This is one cup of whole milk. We're going to mix it up. I did find after adding in the milk and then the vanilla that my cake was a little thicker than I thought it should have been um, for this. I knew it was going to be a thick cake just from the ingredients, but I wanted to make sure that it was pourable at least. And here you see it looks like almost like a thin biscuit dough. So I just added in about a tablespoon of milk at a time. So I think I ended up doing about three tablespoons of milk just until I got it a little bit uh, thinner and it was easier to mix and pour. So here we've added in our vanilla. And again, you could add in a little extra vanilla here if you wanted to or even use vanilla paste instead of vanilla extract. Our berries are done, so we're gonna get those off and we're going to pour those into a fine mesh strainer and strain off all of those juices, delicious juices there. We're gonna reserve those juices to make a sauce a little bit, give them a good shake, and make sure they sit for a minute to get all that extra moisture off. So our final thing here is adding in our baking powder. Now Edna Lewis recommends adding in your baking powder at the end of the recipe instead of in the beginning with your other dry ingredients so that your cake gets a better rise. And I will have to say in this recipe, I completely 100% agree with her. So we have a prepared cake pan here that is um, sprayed with parchment paper and we're just pouring in our cake batter. And see, my cake batter is still pretty thick but it is now spreadable and at least pourable. So just kind of keep an eye on that. Um, you can always add in a little extra moisture if you need to. It's harder to take it out. So once you get your cake nice and spread evenly, we're going to add in our berries and we're just using them, using a spoon to dot it around the cake and kind of spread them out a little bit. You could use here any berry I think that you wanted to, like strawberries or blackberries or just any berry that's local to you or in season. Luckily, um, nowadays we can get berries year round. They just may not be local berries, but they are fresh and beautiful produce. Once your berries are spread, we're gonna to mix together our cinnamon and sugar. I did find that I thought this might have been a tad bit too much sugar. So you could go down to about a fourth of a cup of sugar from the third of a cup if you wanted to. Um, this is the only sugar that you're adding into the recipe besides in the blueberry sauce later, and the blueberry sauce is going to be to your taste. So just make sure you know, you're comfortable with the amount of sugar that you're putting into this. Just spread it evenly around the cake, making sure to get in all the nooks and crannies, because this is gonna kinda create a caramelized crust on top that is delicious. Once you spread everything out, we're going to throw that into a 425 degree oven, which we are immediately going to take down to 375. And we're gonna cook this for about 25 to 28 minutes or until you stick something in the center and it comes out clean. As an admired chef and cookbook author, Edna Lewis taught the American public to appreciate Southern meals in a new way. Known as the grand dame of Southern cooking, Lewis was among the first African-American women from the South to write a cookbook that did not hide the author's true name, gender, or race. Combining her love of food preparation, her deep knowledge of African-American history, Lewis's legacy taught countless others the importance of traditional Southern cuisine. She was born in 1916 in Freetown, Virginia. One of eight children, she lived with her family in a small community of emancipated slaves that her grandfather helped to create. Growing, foraging, and harvesting their own food, most of the members of Freetown cultivated all of their own cooking ingredients. 
As Lewis learned to cook, she treasured the joy and community that was created around food and the many memories that were made. After her father died, Lewis moved away from home at the age of 16. She moved to Washington, D.C., but quickly relocated to New York City and began working as a laundress. She was hired to iron clothes, but she had never ironed before and was fired after three hours. However, she was skilled at sewing and was able to find another job as a seamstress, and she began making dresses for celebrities, including Dorcas Avedon and Marilyn Monroe, while also becoming known for her African-inspired dresses. After marrying her husband and working many jobs in the area, Lewis's dream to become a chef became a reality. Along with her friend, John Nicholson, Lewis opened and became the head chef of Cafe Nicholson in 1949. Located on the east side of Manhattan, this French-inspired restaurant became a staple for artists and celebrities such as Marlon Brando, Tennessee Williams, Greta Garbo, Salvador Dali, and Eleanor Roosevelt. At this restaurant, she would often prepare her beloved southern dishes for her consumers. After three years, Lewis left Cafe Nicholson and she became a lecturer for the American Museum of Natural History and built her brand as a chef and private caterer. As the man for cookbooks and creative foods began to grow, Lewis decided to write her first cookbook. Although women chefs were few and black women chefs were even fewer, Lewis sought to bring fresh and seasonal ingredients to American homes. Along with socialite Evangeline Peterson, Lewis wrote the Edna Lewis Cookbook in 1972. After suffering from a broken leg, Lewis had to take a break from cooking professionally and was introduced to famous cookbook editor Judith Jones, who also was the cookbook editor for Julia Child. Jones believed that Lewis cookbooks could be improved if they incorporated her distinct voice. So Lewis began creating another cookbook with Jones that was full of her childhood stories, Southern cultural traditions, and African-American heritage, entitled The Taste of Country Cooking. Lewis wrote about pure and fresh ingredients, annual Emancipation Day picnics, and the smells of celebratory meals. Published in 1976, her book started a wave of cookbooks released that celebrated the diversity of Southern cuisine. A few years later, Lewis released her third cookbook called In Pursuit of Flavor. Edna Lewis's books are more of a personal memoir as they are a collection of recipes that contain wonderful histories of Southern food and reflections on rural life from her childhood. Her books are full of tips acquired from a lifetime of cooking and her pioneering chapters on fresh food and seasonal seasonality predate the American culinary revolution. Lewis spent most of her career cooking in the South but returned to New York City at the age of 72 to become a chef at a Brooklyn restaurant However, in the early 90s, Lewis moved to Georgia and retired from restaurants. She received various awards and honors, including Who's Who in American Cooking by Cook's Magazine, an honorary PhD in culinary arts from Johnson & Wales University, the James Beard Living Legend Award, and was named the Grand Dame by La Dame de Escoffier International in 1999. A few months before her 90th birthday, Dr. Edna Lewis passed away from cancer in 2016. But we're forever thankful for her addition to cuisine. So now we're going to make our sauce and this is just the leftover sauce from the blueberries with some lemon juice and our cornstarch slurry and then I realized that I got excited and got ahead of myself and completely forgot the sugar. Now you could leave sugar out of this if you wanted to but I'm going to add in about a fourth of a cup. It is really to taste so you could use any other sugar alternative if you wanted to. And this is our final product, a light and lightly sweetened dessert that is delicious. It's so fresh and I think this will quickly become one of my favorite desserts not only to make but to eat. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to follow us on Facebook at Birmingham AIDS Outreach or on our website at baobhm.org. Bye!